I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. So the mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor is set for 91. Once that governor sets in, you get to 91, that car starts doing this. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that fucking factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, when I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, you know, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those fucked up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm still, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's say, okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. So a lot of people can live with themselves. That's the first thing. A lot of people can live with themselves, look in the mirror and say, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm okay with going on this easy highway over here. The easy highway has all these fucking signs and shit, directions, how to get somewhere. And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that say, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, okay, that's okay. It's okay to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is a guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to fucking be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that here in a second, I'm going to start fucking stammering and stuttering. And the whole world is going to know that I have all these issues. But that's when I see right now, okay, Goggins, you got to go on this fucking show. That's Goggins. Goggins is saying, okay, David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the fuck people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, fuck all of you who don't like me, who don't want to. And that person then comes in. But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm fucked up here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with, with, with uh, reading and writing and 
and I'm, I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're gonna get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities, it is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says, whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. That's Goggins. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you wanna be better, you realize you don't wanna be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we wanna be, not who we are. So that's where that dark room is. So in my book, I talk about it a lot. Um, it was my junior year in high school and I fell back a lot. I fell back in this fucking hole of life. The second you think that you've overcome it and you've climbed Everest, you're on that last hold and life will say, <laughs> not today, motherfucker. And it'll push you down. And my junior year in high school, I uh, missed a whole bunch of school, was lying to my mom, had like a one point something GPA. I was just jacked up. I mean, it was, it's, I was in one, one of the worst spots of my life. And my mom was going through a lot of shit too. And she didn't have time to sit back and baby me. And it was me against me. My pants were down to my knees. I was just, I was not, whatever was going on, I was in a bad shape. So I went to the bathroom and I had this weird haircut because I wanted attention. I was an attention getter. I went to an all white school pretty much. Um, some of the kids liked me, a lot of them didn't like me, whatever. Didn't fucking matter. I was looking for something. So I would dress differently, crazy haircuts. And I went to the mirror and the reflection in it revealed a lot of bad things. A lot of things that I was hiding behind the saggy pants. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror going like, God, dog, dude, you gotta, you are something else, man. Like you have created a character. I want to be at the cool guy table and whatever I could do to, to, to get attention, I did. It wasn't me. It wasn't who I was inside, but I was scared for anybody to know who I was inside. So in that accountability mirror, I call it, I got real with myself. I said, you have a, a third grade reading level, which is hard to admit when you're a junior in high school that you copied on every single thing you did because of fear, they're gonna put me in a special school. We all know what special means. I'm gonna have a, a title on myself the rest of my life. And being cool, you don't have a title on yourself. So I started cheating. I was dumb. And people say, oh, you know, you had a learning disability. I had a learning disability, but I realized I was lazy. So, um, I called myself out there. I called myself out every which way possible. I didn't call myself out, I was just honest. I was honest. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. And it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I gonna do today to change what I see in this mirror? What am I gonna do today? And a lot of it was, I stopped sitting with the cool guys. I actually tucked my shirt in, went to school looking like, hey man, this is how I'm gonna look. If you don't like it, so be it. I had to really wear this, this, this layer of skin. I had to develop a really callous skin on me to, to take whatever you're gonna call me, you're gonna call me. Whatever I'm gonna be, you know, I wasn't a geek, but whoever I am, you're gonna see me. You're gonna see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just, just became raw. And when I became fat over the years because I fell back in the hole, I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's going to change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw and it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. I had to use all this negative shit that was making me weak and horrible as a person. I had to use this as the power that now fueled me. I had to flip it on its head and say, hold up. 
this might be exactly what I need. The darkness is exactly what I need. It's how you look at your situation. And I know that it can be very, very frustrating to try and become disciplined. And I apologize that I haven't talked about the fact of, of what to do if you come from an undisciplined family or you have undisciplined parents. I haven't really talked about what to do in that situation, but there's a reason that I haven't talked about that before. And that is because you don't get discipline from your parents. You don't get discipline from your parents, from your grandparents, from your older brothers and sisters. You don't get discipline from an external source. You have to get it from you. That's what self-discipline is. You get it from yourself. You get it from you. So there's people from every possible background, from no parents to crazy parents to you know drug addicted parents to super squared away parents and everywhere in between on that spectrum that are completely disciplined people more disciplined than anyone i know it doesn't come from your parents you don't inherit it and there's another piece here it's called ownership right it's called ownership and if you're if you want to blame other people for the problem and i say this all the time if you don't take ownership of the problem the problem's not going to get solved so if you blame your parents for not having raised you in a disciplined environment you're not going to solve that problem you're looking at your parents saying if you would have done a better job being more disciplined for me i would be more disciplined now mm-hmm. so that means that means you can't do anything the fact of the matter is it's wrong. You actually can do something. And it doesn't matter what, how your parents raised you and brought you up. You can have the discipline you need to decide to do it. So as long as you're blaming other people. I mean, if, if you blame me for not discussing it, you blame me for having zero idea what that experience is like, you blame your parents for not raising you this way, as long as you're blaming other people, as long as you're counting on other people to give you discipline, as long as you do that, you will not have it. So, again, I, I, I'm i sorry, I should have made that, I should make that more clearly, and I'm trying to make it more clearly now, and, and like my parents, my parents are, are good people. They had successful careers as as educators in public schools and my mom eventually became uh, went into school administration my dad taught in high school for 30 something years and they were good hard-working people and uh, but I'll tell you they were no they were no extraordinary preachers of discipline (laughs) and I'll tell you I, I in fact I I never remember either one of them ever using the term or referring to discipline in any way Mm -hmm. Um, you know and actually both my parents worked they both worked a lot my dad was coaching sports and we're doing after-school stuff my mom same thing like we were on our own a bunch my parents were gone in the morning we got ourselves to school when we got home in the afternoon they weren't home Uh, you know so it wasn't like they were setting up this rigid disciplined manner for me right and um, and you can see this with families many many different families there's families that have kids that the parents are very disciplined and the kids are wild mm-hmm. and out of control sometimes that problematically so right kids that come from really good families but they get addicted to drugs lack of discipline kids that come from really good families but they they spin out of control and and go in the wrong direction and there's also the opposite yeah. Which is hey the parents weren't around or the parents were abusive or the parents were drug addicts and and all of a sudden the kid, the kid comes out of that and is squared away is awesome and we saw that all the time in the SEAL teams and I've said that before on this program it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where your background is it's what you decide to do yeah um and I'll tell you another thing it's not even from the military like the military requires discipline obviously. But there's plenty of people in the military that don't have it, <laughs> mm. right? And and many poor many people lose their discipline when they leave the military because it's not being imposed on them anymore. Mm. So I mean, just go look around. Uh, I mean, being in the military does not make you a disciplined person. 
Being from a disciplined family does not make you a disciplined person. Being in a a disciplined group does not make you a disciplined person. What makes you a disciplined person is choosing to be disciplined. So, yeah, I, I, and and also as far as telling people to man up, um, which, you know, when someone says, how do I get up early every day? I say, get up early every day. Yeah. How do I stop eating sugar? Stop eating sugar. If that's the definition of man up, but obviously it's not just men that need discipline in their life. I don't think I use that term, but what I do tell people is to get after it. That's what I tell people, to get after it. Yeah. I tell people to do the things that they know they're supposed to do. Right? There's things that you know you're supposed to do as a human being things that you know are going to improve your life do those things there's things that you know are going to make you a worse person and make your life worse don't do those things don't do the things that are making you weaker start doing the things that are going to make you stronger and smarter and faster and healthier and going to make you a better human being and i'll say the same thing to this guy you want to be more disciplined get after it that's it man Get up early, do some kind of workout, eat good foods, clean your room, make a list of things that you're supposed to do in your life, and then wake up in the morning and do those things that you put on the list. That's what discipline is. And no, it is not easy. But you're not going to get it from anyone else but you. And it's worth it, and it is the thing that is going to bring you freedom. I'm telling you it is worth it. And you know what? You actually know it's worth it. That's why you're asking this question. You You know it's worth it. You know it's worth it to have discipline, but you think there's an easier way. You think that it's something that people have. You think that when Jocko's alarm clock goes off, it's like, oh, just like my father taught me, I rise and I shine. You know, like, (laughs) no. It's like the pillow feels soft and comfortable. Yeah. And the alarm clock is banging on my head and I don't like it. But you know what? I know it's worth it to get up and get after it. I know it's worth it, yeah. and you know it's worth it. Here's the thing, though. We all know it's worth it. Here's the, in in a way, you're right. But like, really though, really, I'm gonna be op- open and honest with you. I don't think that that people know it's worth it. I think they know it's worth it, like the kind on paper. You know, oh, if okay. they have a multiple choice question, is it worth it? Yes or no? They'll be like, yes. Obviously, I know working out is worth it. But here's the thing, I don't. If you don't know, if you don't like like having good credit for example so i never got taught like why really my mom said yeah you should have good credit that's it (laughs) that's the limit to my education on credit right so of course i blow it because i get you know i fall for literally all the tricks (laughs) self-inflicted and otherwise credit gets jammed up so so i don't know i don't know the value i don't know i've never experienced the benefits of having good credit. i don't know the value of good credit so it really didn't mean much to me Mm -hmm. really my credit was like junk And I didn't care until I got denied for something. Then I cared, you know. But just like if you're never into working out until you're in a specific situation where it shows. But 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 like this guy that's asking this question, and I'm glad he's asking the question. I'm 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 not I'm trying I'm not trying to come off all hard. Um, but he realizes, he realizes the value of discipline because he's saying that he wants it. Right? He knows that it's going to make his life better. Yeah. And, and and that's why I think he he's gotten jammed up yeah. in whatever way we don't know because I don't know him. Maybe he's gotten unhealthy. Maybe he's you know who knows. Maybe he's gotten his finances jammed up. Mm-hmm. What, whatever the case may be, he knows that discipline is better for them. Him, he knows that he does know. This isn't a guy that doesn't know yet. Because sure, there's people that don't. You know, when you're 16 years old, you don't know the value of discipline. You don't know that the what you're the way you're acting right now is going to affect you in five years. You don't know that you can set yourself your whole life up to be pretty awesome. Yeah. You don't know that yet. You're just like worried about where you're going on a Friday night. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So this guy knows, and he wants it, and he's looking for where he can find it, and where he can find it is. In the mirror. Yeah. That's where it is. Yep. So do it, brother. Good luck. Get on the path and stay on the path. Yeah. And that's going to be beneficial when you do that. I, I st- I'm st- harshly maintaining that, like, not knowing the value is a big is a big thing. It's kind of like, okay, so back to my credit thing. I, it, there is a point at the end where, okay, so, um, you know, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or whatever, I, I repaired my credit. I, my credit was repaired. I I went through it was painstaking, mm-hmm. not fun stuff. Yep. 
but i did it got my credit repaired and now i know the value because as an adult i'm functioning it's useful now you know so now i know the value of having good credit because i've been through all the things that having good credit brings you through you know it, you know and i and i want people to understand this dream big but get small wins though Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can dream big, but yeah. get the small wins. Okay. And those small, I never forget uh, hearing John Elway speak once. You know, John Elway was like, yo, I became great by being good over a long period of time. Mm. You know, mm. and so for me, it was, all right, Didi's leaving. Mm. She's going to college. If I can get my GED, that's, that's all I need to that focus on right now is let me get the GED. And here's the thing I never realized by having a girlfriend, it was like, I'm not dating anybody that's selling dope. I'm not dating anybody that's, you know, violent. Yeah. You know, I'm not dating nobody that's carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. So for me, those were wins. Yeah. So for me, it was like, I didn't even know by being with her, it stopped me from doing some of the stuff that had I not had a purpose, mm -hmm. I probably would have been doing what my boys were doing because I was with them. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so the GED was the first win. Okay. Then I ended up following her, going to college. Now, our first college was Oakwood, went to a very small school in Alabama. Okay. But then after I finished that, and I, I was speaking at the time, and so now universities are like, um, University of Cincinnati saw me, University of um, Louisville, Michigan State. So Michigan State came and said, hey, all these, these guys like you, but we want to court you. Like, we want you to come get a degree and eventually work for the university. Okay. So I'm thinking high school dropout, you know, I got a four-year degree. I go to Michigan State, like, I can make my mama proud again. I'm from Detroit. So it's U of M. Or it's Michigan State. Right. And so I'm like, yo, I can reverse this thing. My little sister went to U of M. Mm -hmm. So if I go to U of, uh, Michigan State, my mom, that's like house money. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. like, mom could be yeah. proud of me again. Because, you know, of course, leaving home, yeah. you know, we get into it. You know, it was a point where my mom was kind of discouraged. Like, I didn't raise you like this. Mm -hmm. You know, so to go to Michigan State, get a master's degree, it's like, yo, I can make mama proud. And then when she came to the graduation all excited, I'm like, hey, I might as well get the PhD. You know, let's let's just finish it up. Bring her back one more time. And some of the pain that I caused her, I'm sure another degree is only going to make her that, you know, much more. So I just say, man, start with the small wins. Well, wow, those end up being, uh, you have your PhD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are some yeah. big wins. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't do the PhD. Like, I don't talk about that and do that. But when I'm in school, I use that in the educational okay. environment because it kind of helps me, so, you know, leverage my platform. Yeah, I think for real, man, most of them, you know, and you got to be humble, you know, and I think too many of us who've been blessed like we've been blessed, people watch us and don't see the humility like they would prefer to see, you know, the confidence in us, you know, the passion yeah. and overlook like the humility. But it, when you're humble, that's how you see things that other people don't see. Like when you're humble, you see you are running water. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been to other countries where wow. they don't have running water. Wow. You know, um, you know, we all have a roof already. This is a different type of roof. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But but you can look at this every day and see the water and just go like, yo, this is a gift. Because how many people have tried to do the exact same thing you tried to do yep. in the exact same way you tried to do it? And it didn't end up like this. Yeah. So I wake up every day like, yo, E, you've been married 20. Somebody, you've been married almost 28 years. Like somebody took a chance on you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm being real. Like her mom was like, don't do it. Her father was like, don't do it. Like, what does he have? He doesn't have anything. That's a gift when somebody loves you when you don't have absolutely anything. And then now it's a gift to be with somebody who's not with me because I'm an ET the hip hop preacher, but really yeah. Yeah. has been with me like in the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. So I know this is my, my ride or die. So I think gifts are all around us, but some people aren't humble enough to say, yeah, I did work for this one, but this one, let's just be honest. Yeah. I didn't work for this one. Yeah. This was a gift from God. This was given to me yeah. and I and I gotta be humble and be grateful. Pimping ain't easy, but somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> that was my first message. At the church meeting. Yeah, at the church meeting. <laughs> Pimping ain't easy, but somebody's gotta do it. That's why I said don't laugh. But, but this is how I knew I had something because people were like, yo, nobody's ever. And so I talked about how the devil's trying to pimp us. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I just took that whole angle. And then my second message just blew up was how many licks does it take to get to the center of a sucker? <laughs> you know, and so everybody was just like, yo, bro, this is different. Like, this is not a normal yeah. preacher. It's not a normal delivery. The energy is kind of different. Yeah. So while adults weren't really fooling with me, a lot of guys who were like, yo, we don't even do that church stuff. 
Yes. Like, we don't do that kind of stuff. We're not into that. And what was unique about, and I'm glad you asked, nobody's ever asked me this. Mm -hmm. What was unique is that we did it at the bell tower, which was in the center of the campus. So you had to pass it to go anywhere. So it was cast like, yo, I wasn't coming to no spiritual event, but I would hear that loud mm -hmm. voice and that passion. Seriously? And I heard pimping, pimping, <laughs> right. pimping. Are you talking about yeah. pimping? at church you know so they would just walk over like yo what is he talking about pimping ain't easy and, and it was at that point when i saw non-church regular people yes. jeans t-shirts coming by yeah. and when i would speak stop i was like yo e you got you got something yeah, yeah. you got something you got you, something. you knew it then yeah and, and so for me it's like when you get around people when you spend enough time with people yeah to see what people want and then you give them what they need yeah. to me that's what it's all about you know so it's yes. like we got to get out of this this is what i want to talk about or this is what i want to say or mm -hmm. this is how i want it's like no my idols mother Teresa. like i used just to watch her movement right and she was the lowest of the pecking order when you talk about priest she wasn't an archbishop she wasn't a pope she was a nun right. but yet you know who she is and i would watch her and she would see okay here are the needs of the people mm -hmm. when i watched martin luther king this dude could have easily been like a millionaire living in a, he moved and with the people and said, hey, I'm gonna give up my life and what I wanna do to help. So for me, it's like, you can't affect a person if you don't know what they want. So you gotta spend enough time with people, mm -hmm. just chilling with people, hanging out with people. That's why I was geek, it's like, it's not a studio. I'm right. like, yo, we're Ed's crib. It's right. gonna be phenomenal right, right, just right. because the ethos, like we, we're in your house. Right, right, this is where right. you live. Like yeah. it's, a, it's energy already in the, in the space, you know, and spirits, yeah. you know, already in the place. So for me, it's like, you gotta get to know the people, yeah. spend time with the people. And then once you find out what they need, you like a cow, you chew it up, chew it up, chew it up, chew it up. Mm -hmm. You study it, you study it, and then when you get to them, you give them what they need. And of course they're gonna be excited, it's because what they need. No. I'll say, well my life now, if you look at it, it's, like, it's not fair, Didi retired back in March okay. of last year. Okay. And so now our day is just our day, man. You know, our day is just, our, man, I'm free, man. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling. I do wanna say this to those of you who are watching, who are not yet where you wanna be, like keep going. Like, keep going, don't quit. Mm -hmm. You're already in pain, you're already struggling. Like, get something for your pain. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense to go through pain and then not get nothing on the other side of it. So since you're already struggling, you're already going through it, get on the other side. So what does my day look like? Wow. Like, yo, D and I got up at three o'clock, you know, she called a prayer line. You know, I have my own little prayer line I call. Uh, we breakfast, or so a little small little breakfast, just sitting there talking to each other. We having worship with each other just like talking about the goodness, like we can't believe we're here. You know what I'm saying? We went from Detroit to, yeah. you know, the world. Um, you know, we're going to the movies later on the day, going out to eat, driving around. So it's not fair to talk about my day now. Wonderful. You know, but my day now is I promised her when we were younger because she worked first and supported my dream. Yeah. And I told her one day we're going to flip it. You know, and I'm, I'm, you gonna stop working, and I'm, I'm gonna spoil you and take care of you. So I'm like at a point in my life now where I'm getting to make good on my promise. You know, yeah. and we're debt free right now, man, and awesome. just, just traveling the world, awesome. man. Oh, no yeah, man, oh no man, nothing. And we're able to yeah. help kids go to college. We got a church we're building right now. My son just graduated. My daughter's a sophomore. So we're just enjoying yeah. each other. You know, and uh, it's, face, it's a great feeling, man. Face. I would say honestly, man, you know, I, I came to the realization one day and again, love my biological father, you know, much respect, much respect for the person that raised me. Um, but I realized at some point when I looked at my family's history, I was like some things I don't want and some things I want, but there's some things I don't want. And then I, I remember having to say one day to myself, like, yo, you are your father's child. Like, yo, even though you didn't, he didn't raise you. Even though in the beginning you guys had, you know, whatever little stuff y'all need to get through, E, don't lie. You are lazy at times. You know what I'm saying? Like, E, you are super social and you'd rather talk than work. You know what I'm saying? I just had to grow up one day and just be real with myself and just say, E, the only way you're going to be successful is you got to discipline yourself. Yeah. You know, when you look at uh, when you look at a horse, I'm talking about a thoroughbred. It still needs that. What is that thing called that they put on it? It, it, it? it still yeah. need, he needs that without, the, you know, yeah. it, you can't, you, you got to control him. You know, he got a lot of juice, got a lot of energy. He can go for it, but you, you got to, you got to hone that. Yeah. And so I realized like, yo, E, you sleep in, you play video game. Don't lie to yourself. You, you are powerful. Yeah. 
but you have some vices yes. and you have some vices that take you down a crazy road like you are your father you are your grandfather you are your mother you are your grandma like it's real mm -hmm. and so i started saying okay e you got to discipline yourself and this is for me this ain't for everybody i start getting up at three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. it's like yo you're gonna have to get up a little bit earlier because you didn't finish school mm -hmm. you didn't take care of your business so you can't get up the same time another man who gets up who handle his business so you need to get up at three if you're gonna catch the greats you got to get up at three you got to go to bed earlier this is why i said i never drank or smoked because the men in my life who did it were extremists. Had an uncle who died, cirrhosis of the liver. You know, I had other uncles who drank and, and my father, bless his heart, but he was strung out on drugs for about 14 years. And I was just like, yo, E, you can see that they don't know how to do it casually. Like, they ain't social drinkers. Like, they ain't social on something. They taking it to a whole other level. And so for me, it was like, E, you gotta discipline yourself. You're not going to die if you never know what alcohol tastes like. But if you taste it, you might have the same experience they had. So you just got to discipline yourself.